Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and today I'm going to be doing a review for the A Little Hatred and the Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie. So this is going to be non-spoilery to start with <coughs> and then I might just go into a few spoilers at the end but I'll have a clear like spoiler warning. Um, so yeah so I'm going to talk about each book individually and why I liked it and also my comparison to First Law because I I'm not the biggest fan of the First Law trilogy, but I absolutely love both of these. So I want to talk about why I think that is maybe, and why you might want to give this series a chance if you haven't, if you've like, tried First Law but you didn't absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll start with a little hatred. So the series is The Age of Madness, um, and it is set about 30 years after the events of the First Law trilogy. So it's in the same world. And I do believe there are standalones between them, but I haven't personally read the standalones. But I do feel like you would maybe get even more like Easter eggs out of this if you've read the standalones. But I don't feel like I missed out that much having not read them. But I do feel like maybe you would miss out if you hadn't read First Law because there's quite a few like connecting things. Um, I do feel still feel like you could read them, but I feel like you would get more out of it if you've read the First Law trilogy beforehand. But I feel like these is a much better series than First Law, for me anyway. Um, yeah, so the main thing I love so much was the characters. I just feel like the characters are absolutely great. And a lot of people praise First Law for the characters. But the only character I was really attached to in the original series was Glockter. Um, which I, I do love Glockter. And actually I really like Baez. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, the other characters I always felt like were a bit like men. They're very like dude bro-y. I feel like the characters in this one are just so good. And I absolutely love them all. Like there wasn't really a single POV. Maybe towards the start of A Little Hatred, there were a couple of POVs which I didn't really love as much. But then by the Trouble With Peace, I loved all the POVs. Like they grew on me and oh. So yeah, I really like the characters. And I feel like the plot is a lot stronger as well. So the plot of these were kind of it's sort of the age is like becoming more of an industrial revolution and a lot of progress is happening and like kind of machines are being built and so there's a lot of progress happening quite quickly and because of that a lot of the working class especially are becoming quite kind of discontent and there's like rumblings of sort of a revolution and they talk about like a great change and there's these um it's like re re rebels called the breakers um, and they kind of wanting more like workers rights and things <laughs> which is a is a decent cause to be honest because the nobility are absolute twats <laughs> but then we also still have the kind of monarchy and the king um so actually yeah i didn't say this but if you haven't read first law trilogy there might be one or two spoilers in here um for that um just because yeah well firstly like surviving characters <laughs> um and, and actually that is a point i'm sorry this review is a little bit chaotic but the i feel like the as the age of madness series goes on the sort of original characters are sort of all being kind of gradually like retired almost <laughs> and it's like now the new generation is taking over so the we're kind of following the kind of yeah the next generation and quite a few of the characters are the children of first law characters so Sabine one of the characters she is Glockter and Ardy's daughter um and then Ricky another one I, I think it's actually Ricker but I always say Ricky because that's how I pronounce in my head is the dogman's daughter um and then I think Leo is the son of a character from one of the standalones um which I didn't I haven't read that and then also is the son of Prince Giselle or King Giselle now um, and also is Prince also um so yeah so we're kind of following that next like generation down which I think is really cool and I really like that uh, anyway so and now I've mentioned the characters we will talk about the characters because I love them all so much so Savine Dan Glockter who is an absolute queen she's probably one of my new like favorite female characters of all time she's so good she's so complex she's so I want to say like rich but I mean she is filthy rich but, but like rich in character to read about and she just feels like a whole person and she has she has flaws and she's so like real but she's also so like power hungry <laughs> she's so she's great to read about I think I saw a review comparing her to like Cersei Lannister but like I feel like she's a lot more likable than Cersei but it's that same kind of really like ruthless type um energy um and she um is kind of she's like 
a business mongrel i don't know she has a lot of like investments and she does a lot of investing and like getting money and she's quite involved in the like machinist type society um yeah so she's very much like a woman of business um, and she's kind of made a fortune for herself and yeah she's quite um ambitious uh yeah so that's her and and also yeah i really like her relationship with her like ladies like companion maid thing called zori um and they're like I mean, I know, like, she says, like, she's a paid friend, but they are, like, friends, and I really like Zuri, and just their, the whole dynamic, like, Savine's so kind of, um, almost over the top in a way, and then Zuri's, like, this very kind of calm, like, steadfast, and she just has kind of a dry humour to some of Savine's comments, which is really good, um, yeah, and I really like the humour in this book, I just, I feel like when I read the, like, opening thing, I just yeah i just like the humor and the writing I know, I know i'm all over the place here but anyway i thought the writing was really good like i feel like that i mean i guess you get that in first story as well but it's just so well crafted and like the balance of humor and kind of seriousness and the especially like the kind of okay i'll talk about that in a bit but i just feel like it's all really good like the dialogue is always good and yeah I just really like it. So anyway, so back to the characters. So then we have Leo, Dan Brock, um, who, oh God, Leo. <laughs> I love Leo, but he's a complete disaster. And to be honest, he, some of the things he does is a bit unlikable, but he's just so dumb and you can't help but like him. Um, yeah, so Leo is just like, um, I don't know what he is. He's like the Lord Governor's son or Lady Governor, because it's Finnery, who's his mum, um, and yeah, they, so they, um, are currently fighting against the Northmen, so at the start of a little hatred, um, and the kind of, I think the Northmen king is, like, Scale Iron Hand, and then his son, Stour Nightfall, and his, no, Scale Iron Hand is the king, and then his nephew is Stour Nightfall, and his, Stour Nightfall's dad is Black Calder, and I think Black Calder is maybe a character in one of the standalones as well, so, and I'm sure I've heard the name Black Calder. I think he must be in the original series. But, so Leo's fighting them and he's very much like a kind of, <laughs> he just charges into war and he likes fighting and he doesn't like really like anything else. <laughs> um, and Leo is very clearly queer. Um, he's like always thinking about how handsome his like friends are and stuff. But he is so homophobic at the same time. Um, so he's very repressed, I would say. And yeah seeing that a very messy queer character I think is a good like depiction although I do wish he would just get his act together um but yeah um and then we have also Prince Orso who I also love I feel like I didn't originally like Orso that much but as I, I love him now I just probably he's almost my favorite um like he is such a funny character. His like self-depreciating humour is so funny and his like wit and he's a very, he always like puts himself down as like very like incompetent and stuff but actually he does some quite like good things. Like he, he uses his strengths, like his advantage but he's the, the very sort of like lay about kind of charming flirty prince but he's like always drinking and um, he has some, he has these like companions like Tony and Hildy and their whole like trio is so funny and yeah I just really like also and, and especially in The Trouble With Peace um, how he like learns to kind of step up a little bit and take on a bit more responsibility and um, I just really love that whole thing and then um, we have Ricky or Ricker who is the dogman's daughter and she, so she is in the north and she's sort of this like feral character. She's really good. She has this thing called the long eye, which she can sort of see visions of the future. And I really like that. And um, and the, how that sort of ties into the story. Yeah, I just really like Ricky as a character. She's really hard to talk about actually, like in describe her, but I just really like her. <laughs> um, and especially in The Trouble With Peace. I'll talk about that in the spoilery section, but her storyline in The Trouble With Peace I really loved. So yeah, the and, and then other characters. So we have Vic, um, who is a spy. She works for the Inquisition. Like she's very much kind of Glockter's like, she's very loyal to Glockter. Um, and, but she's sort of this like, it almost her like, 
you can see the conflict within herself of like where her loyalties lie and she's so she's sort of been brought up in the like prison camps so she's kind of been hard done to by the like union but she's still working for them because that's what she feels like will be best and and she has a secret like heart of gold you can tell and and i really liked her she sort of she doesn't adopt <laughs> but she somehow acquires this like tallow who's like this 12 year old kid um who she sort of takes her, her, him under her wing and it's so cute i love their dynamic um as well so yeah and then also broad who i think maybe as a character in the standalones as well and he sort of gets involved so he was like a soldier and then he's gone back to his family and then his family get like kicked out of their lands so and they go to this new city called valbeck which is quite a bit of stuff happens in valbeck in the story um and yes yeah, so he sort of ends up getting involved with the rebels so like the breakers um so that's kind of his pov we explore a bit through that um, and seeing the like rebe like the rebellion is it rebellion revolt I, I don't know the right word um kind of brewing in the city is very interesting and that's sort of where the main conflict i would say in a little hatred kind of lies um yeah so i i would just highly recommend and then yeah trouble with peace i feel like we're getting more um of the conflict well yeah so there's sort of there's still the conflict with like the breakers and the sort of um, workers like revolution going on but also at the same time there's the a bit of a civil war happening and the characters end up sort of pitted against each other um in a very sort of dramatic fashion at parts but yeah I feel like I talk a bit more about the trouble with peace when I talk about spoilers but I would really highly recommend them like I said the writing is really good um, it just so like well crafted and it just dr draws you into the story. I feel like I couldn't put it down. Like I look up and like an hour would have passed, and I feel like and there's no way I've been reading for an hour. Um, and yeah, I just got so attached to the characters and also I feel like <laughs> I think because I read these physically and having read the first law audiobooks, I feel like Joe Abercrombie's sex scenes are a unique experience and i just feel like he does them like in a very i don't want to say realistic way but they're very like not glamorized like they're very sort of <laughs> rutting <laughs> is maybe a good term yeah no i really enjoyed them would highly recommend some great characters and they're like new favorites so yeah so i will talk about spoilers some spoilers now i i just talk about some random things um, before we do that, actually, there is a read along going on at the moment, hosted by Golanx, the publisher. I think that's, I hope that's how you say it. Um, and they're currently on a little hatred, but then they're going to be doing a troubled piece. And I will be one of the like stops for a troubled piece. So there will be a video in a few weeks where I talk about just a little section of the troubled piece. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, maybe in a bit more depth because I can't fit it all into this video but yeah so would highly recommend um but then yeah if you're not here if you're here for spoilers so we'll talk about some things um so yeah go away now if you don't want spoilers um so, so the first thing is oh my god also with Sabine I actually ship them and I feel so bad <laughs> because I I'd I'd completely forgotten so it's been it's been over a year since I read um the last argument of kings and so i'd completely forgotten about the whole ardy and giselle thing um and and so when when it was told and i and i think when when ardy was like talking to sabine about it i sort of realized as they were having that conversation before she said and i was like oh no you know that that tiktok sandwich like oh no oh no oh no 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 and that was sort of going through my head and i <laughs> but I don't know how he managed to do it the author in such a funny way like I never thought I'd be laughing at incest <laughs> but I kind of was and and there's a line where Savina's just like I, I, I see if I can find it because I just thought it was really funny <laughs> um but yeah um that was kind of um a bit a bit sad because I actually quite like them together but I, I just forgotten and, and then it and now I feel like I can't ship them um but so 
and then uh, so this is spoilers for both Little Hatred and Trouble with Peace. So and then I feel like Savine and Leo. I don't know how I feel about them because obviously I feel like I shit Leo and Duran because they're so cute, but also Leo is so homophobic. It's painful. Um, but I feel like Leo. I'm really hoping in a wisdom of crowds he gets over himself because there was like a moment in the Trouble with Peace where they're like so close and then off. Um, and then and when he's like with the Japo and he's like can't stop looking at his like shirtless belly and oh Leo you absolute disaster but um yeah I don't I feel like Leo and Sabine they're very like Sabine's so clever and so like ambitious and then Leo's just this like little <laughs> dumb animal who just like follows along and and I guess that is very much his downfall in the trouble with peace because he just kind of follows along with what people are telling him and doesn't really think critically at all and then ends up in his situation <laughs> so yeah I ho hopefully he's learned his lesson and actually I did like him in the like just before he's hanged at the end of the trouble with peace he sort of thinks that he's learnt so much and if only he had a chance and then obviously also tells him to stop so now he does have a chance so hopefully in a wisdom of crowds he will have some character growth <laughs> hopefully and he will realize that he's always been in love with his childhood best friend <laughs> um and then Sabine and it will turn out that actually also is a bastard so he's not actually Giselle's son and then also and Sabine can be together um but I don't think that'll happen but anyway I did really like um so the whole also Sabine Leo um Ricky thing at the end of a little hatred I actually really like Ricky in it also I thought that was a quite a good um dynamic yeah anyway I'll give up on that but um yeah so Ricky um her story of Ricka it, her story in the show of peace I loved it so much so when she like I guess betrays them um and she ends up in the north and she goes to, like the city I was just like internally screaming like yes Ricky and and she was the one who sent the letter to Orsio as well um which just oh I I actually kind of like them um but I just I like the dynamic I like the dynamic between Ricky and Leah actually in the first book and also Ricky and Sabine I also really like I just like her dynamics with everyone and also I really like her thing with like Isren and the nail and shivers and all them lot um so I'm really excited for Wisdom of Crowds and see her like be sort of queen of the north I think I'll be really good and the line which is like Ricky with the long eye sense of regards <laughs> I love that um she sort of comes to terms with her like powers and responsibilities a bit and I guess again also also does that how he sort of becomes so at the end of the first book when Giselle dies and then he has to kind of become king and throughout the trouble with the peace you see him sort of starting to believe in himself and his leadership a little bit more and I like that and I love how both also and Leo are both such mum boy like mum's boys um and also when his mum and how also such like <laughs> a like little proud ally um and that reunion scene was so cute um yeah this is getting a bit long now I should probably stop just gushing about all my favorite scenes but I love them um so yeah what else did I want to talk about oh yeah my theory for the end of a wisdom of crowds is um that Vic will be in charge um and she will be like head of a some sort of it like the monarchy will be toppled and then it will be like a like a yeah a government um and she'll be in charge that's my theory because i'm so like ricky's prophecy thing which is like the wolf will be eaten by the lion which is like nightfall and leo's jewel and then the lamb will eat the lion which is like also beating leo which is like the trouble with peace and there's like the owl will be the lamb and i don't think we know who the owl is yet but i'm guessing it's vic but i don't know so we'll see so yeah so that's that I don't know what other thoughts I have. <laughs> I could probably just keep spewing up stuff for like an hour, but I probably shouldn't. I feel like they explore sort of almost populism and reflect quite well on the, our politics, like as a country or as a world and the way things are going. So like, especially in the trouble with peace with this whole um, 
especially the way sort of Leo and the others are sort of pulled into the rebellion, it's kind of like the, it's the whole like make America great again thing, but the way it's manipulated into it. So the, the Lord Isha, he is obviously very much noble, but he is kind of mani clearly manipulating the, um, the sort of little people into being discontent with the nobility but at, in actual fact it's just furthering his sort of quest for power I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well so like the sort of people who are like the kind of working class who should be sort of fighting for their rights is almost being tricked into uh, kind of believing these very right-wing ideals of like they think they're getting power but actually they're just feeding into the really powerful people and it ends up with just the rich getting richer type thing and um, which i think is a very interesting reflection on like politics nowadays with how like people who should very clearly be like in favor of the sort of left-wing politics are being pulled in by like nationalism and that whole sense of like bringing but yeah, I guess maybe not bringing back the past so much in the books, but just the whole thing of like fighting for like your country's values, but actually maybe the values are kind of a bit corrupt. And yeah, I just think that's very interesting. Um, look at that. Um, yeah, so that is my review for A Little Hatred and the Troubled Peace. Uh, if you didn't know, if you couldn't have guessed, I really liked them. Um, I would highly recommend. I cannot wait for the wisdom of crowds. I just, yeah, I hope, hope Leo gets his act together um, and hope Sabine doesn't, doesn't suffer enough placental abruption because I'm a bit worried about the amount of um, pearl dust, which I, I'm thinking is just cocaine, um, that she is taking whilst pregnant. Um, as someone who's just done their obs and gyne placement. Um, yeah. Well, so Ricky, I hope she continues to be the amazing queen that she is in the north. Um, yeah, so anyway, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely let me know in the comments what you thought of these books, if you read them or if you're excited to read them, um, then let me know. I don't know why you would watch this far if you haven't read them yet, but I'm watching you. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all having a good day <coughs> and I'll see you next time.